Hi, how you doing? How was your day? This is Stupido. Welcome to Stand There For. Today we'll be looking at the breastplate of righteousness. You know, in that place in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 14, the Bible says, Guard your loins with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness. And the breastplate of righteousness, or rather the breastplate, is one of the pieces of the Roman soldier's gear that protects his thorax. There's a natural protection of the vital organs under the thorax that God puts, which is the ribs. And for further protection, you know, the Roman soldiers of old have this metal that they use as a protective covering, both in the front and in the rear, to protect vital organs like the heart, the lungs, your stomach, the intestines, your liver and spleen, and your kidneys. These organs are vital. Any damage to these organs will result in stand death. These vital organs are very, very important for the body to function. We are going to look at the spiritual undertone to this vital organ and why it is necessary to have it clagged, secured with the breastplate of righteousness. Join me. Hi, welcome back. So in that place, Paul said, stand, having your leons guard about with truth. And he said, have him put on the breastplate of righteousness. And like I said, there's the heart, there are the lungs, we have the um, liver, we have the kidneys, are the rare, we have this abdomen and the intestines. All these organs are very, 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 very important to keep a man alive. This breastplate does serious work as a defensive armor for that soldier to ensure that those vital organs are in. The Bible says in Leviticus that the life of every animal is in the blood. And we know that the heart is that machine, that equipment that ensures the circulation of this life throughout the body. And the Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence. That out of it flows the issues of life. It's so important for you to stand, having your heart guard against worry, anxiety, you know, all those things that deflate your faith, doubt and fear. So you need to guard it with everything you have. And a revelation of righteousness is important to guard that, as well as the spiritual atmosphere you have around you. Especially when you're believing for something. I know a man of God that had the daughters, I think the daughter was about barely one or two, barely two I believe, had her two middle fingers chopped off. Do you know what he did? He conditioned the spiritual atmosphere around him and around his wife. Throughout the period we are believing God for a miracle, before their next appointment with the plastic surgeon, who has told them that nothing will happen, that the only thing that will happen is that they'll just wait for their finger to heal and that's it. But he believed otherwise. He believed that the fingers will grow. I know what it means for a finger to, fingers to grow. That means the bone will grow, the nerves will grow, the joints, the sinus, everything will grow. He conditioned his environment. He stunned, say they pulled the plug from the TV. They never read any newspaper. They avoided any evil report, any bad news, anything that will affect the condition of their heart and the spiritual atmosphere around them. They ensured that they bred faith. In the Bible, Jesus said that the faith, if you have faith like a mustard seed, you will see to this mountain. He compared faith to a seed. And for every seed to be to grow, germinate, and become a tree, the ground, the environment where you plant it is very important. That is what the lungs represent. The lungs take in oxygen and expels carbon dioxide. The lungs keep your body oxidized because a lot of functions in your body require oxygen in its environment to thrive. And they also say that if you live in an area where the air you breathe is not good or is polluted, there are a lot of respiratory diseases 
that will affect or be prevalent in that entire environment. So your environment is important for you to have a healthy life because of what you breathe in. So is your spiritual environment. And that's what the lungs there represent. Then of course, you know what the stomach is. That's what you, when, you, what, when you take in food, it goes into your tummy. It goes into your abdomen. And the Bible talks about the word of God and, you know, uses the metaphor of, of food to talk about the word of God. It's really bread. You know, the word of God is like bread. And that tells you something. What you feed on spiritually is important. Throughout the period, you are believing God for something. The same thing with this man of God. While they were waiting for the next appointment, they were standing in faith. They were feeding on the word. So they say they sat down, day in, day out, listening to faith messages, hours on end. They were feeding on faith, feeding on the word that has to do with faith, miracles, and you know healing. Throughout that period, whenever you are believing God for something, watch what you feed on spiritually. That is when you need to increase the diet particular for that thing you are believing God for. You are believing God for a child. You need to start feeding on the word of God that talks about productivity, that breaks barrenness. You are believing God for financial breakthrough. Sit down on the word of financial breakthrough. You sit on it. You incubate it. Day in, day out, night in, day out. Let it be what enters your heart through your ear gates. That's what they told me. So you protect what you, you listen to. You protect what you hear. Throughout that period, you are standing in faith, trusting God for a miracle. And of course, the intestines, there are two of them. The large one expels garbage, while the small intestine is what is responsible for assimilating you know, the nutrients from that food. You also guard what you hear. If you hear the wrong things, you expel it. The same thing the liver does. The liver is in charge of detoxification of the human body, expelling dangerous toxins out of the body. You also have to do that. You hear what is not right, you expel it. You just don't say, mm, don't worry. You expel it. You have friends that hang around you, breathing doubt, fear, and anxiety. You kick them out. No apologies to anybody because you're believing for something. When you're standing, if you believe for something, there are no apologies to anybody. Then your kidneys too. They also perform important functions. One of the ways you know that you have heart disease is that it shows up in your kidneys. Your kidney functions will be out of place. All this is what the breastplate protects. The breastplate of righteousness. You need to sit on that revelation of righteousness. Know for sure that it is not by the works you engage in. You don't say, and a lot of people have come to tell me that, but pastor, I have sown, I have done this, I come, that miracle has not yet come. You know, they've put faith in, in their seed instead of putting faith in God. I'm not against seed sowing. Oh, I do that a lot. But seed sowing is a point of contact. You're saying, God, I am standing on your word. I believe in you. I am using this seed to connect. You know, it's a point of contact. Don't put faith in the seed. Put faith in the word and the person that's going to do that miracle. Don't say because I've sown, so this is supposed to happen. That's the problem. A lot of people have sown that they've not seen the miracle because they have channeled their faith to the wrong object instead of putting their faith in the Most High God. So the works of righteousness is done with. All done with. You have been made righteous by God himself. The Bible says in, in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 that he made him sin, when you know sin, that we might be made the righteousness, that we might become the righteousness of God through him. God is not seeking to punish you. He's not seeking to teach you something. He didn't put that disease on you to teach you or to train you. He's not seeking to harm you. That is what the thief does. He has come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But our Father has come that you may have life and have in abundance, fullness of life. That is what God seeks. God seeks to bless you. That is why he has imputed his righteousness on you so there won't be any other basis for you to slack. Satan is the one that condemns. God is the one that justifies. Go 
this revelation. And I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.